Science Shorts gives you speed and distance time graphs. This will be in P3 for those of you doing OCR, GCSE Science, P2 for AQA and Topic 15 for Edexcel. It's ridiculously easy to get mixed up between distance time graphs and speed time graphs. If you're not concentrating, you can trip up and in your exam lose out on some easy marks. That's why it's been split up into two videos here. Okay, here's Bob. Bob has a tank and he's about to roll down to the YouTube HQ to offer his opinion on forcing everyone to use Google+, Plus, which is just great. So off he toddles and he covers the first 50 meters in 10 seconds. To draw this on a speed time graph, we start at 0 meters and 0 seconds and draw a straight line to 50 meters and 10 seconds. Bob then hits some traffic, so naturally it takes a bit of extra time to get over the cars. Over the next 20 seconds, he only moves 20 meters, so we draw a line now going to 70 meters and 30 seconds. After the traffic, he pegs the final stretch of 30 meters in five seconds, so we now finish our graph at 100 meters and 35 seconds. Now, let's have a look at our graph, and let's try to calculate Bob's speed at different points. Now, speed is measured in meters per second, m slash s, that's how we write it, which should give you a clue as to how we actually calculate it. Speed is, of course, equals to distance divided by time, or you might say distance over time. That means if you know how long it took for something to travel a certain distance, you can calculate its speed. Looking at Bob's first part of the journey, we can see he traveled 50 meters in 10 seconds. That means his speed is five meters per second. What we've just done is calculated the gradient of this bit of the graph. Put simply, gradient is just up divided by across using two points on a graph. That's quite important though, that the gradient of a distance time graph is equals to the speed, or we might say average speed. Okay, so it's your turn now. Pause the video and calculate Bob's speed during the next two parts of his journey. Let's see how he got on then. He took 20 seconds to go over 20 meters of cars, so the gradient equals 20 meters divided by 20 seconds, so his speed is one meter per second. The final stretch of 30 meters took him 5 seconds, so 30 meters divided by 5 seconds equals 6 meters per second. Well done if you got those right. Of course, if there was a horizontal line on this distance time graph, that would mean that Bob would not be moving for that period of time, as his distance actually isn't increasing. To learn about speed time graphs and acceleration, and whether Bob escapes, click here or follow the link in the description. Don't forget to leave a like and leave a comment telling us what science topics you'd like to see sketched next.